Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed update on the tropics for September the 2nd, 2023 on this fantastic Saturday. We have breaking news to share with you all. As you know, we could be dealing with our next big system as it moves towards the west, towards the Caribbean, eventually into the southwestern Atlantic as a potential hurricane that could have winds greater than 75 miles an hour, and this would be Lee on our next named bit of storms. We have Katia up here with winds up to 60. We have Gert that is also a tropical storm with 50 mile an hour winds and here is our former post-tropical cyclone, Adalia, which has winds also at 60 miles an hour. We have a lot to digest in today's big update. So the big talk will be on Invest 95L for the entire video, as this has a pretty big chance of becoming something pretty sinister as it moves westward. So here it is from the NHC, a tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorm activity to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Environmental conditions appear conducive for some gradual development of this system by the middle part of next week. A tropical depression is likely to form while it moves westward to the west-northwest at 15 to 20 miles an hour over the eastern and central portions of the tropical Atlantic. So they're even saying a tropical depression is expected as this moves westward and then it could become our next name storm which would be Lee, L-E-E. -E. If you guys are wondering, it's not L-E, it's L-E-E. -E. And that will be the one that we really got to watch. Katia, not going to bother anyone though, which is good. All right, so this is a look at the true color visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. And I'm telling you, there is Tropical Storm Katia pretty organized for a little bit there with some of the deep convection kind of waning away a little bit. There is Gert. Yes, Gert is kind of hanging out just staying in one spot pretty much, and then there is what is left with Adalia, which made landfall a few days ago, actually over four days ago, in the Big Bend of Florida. But again, the big discussion of today's video will be this monster, well, it's not really a monster yet, but this is going to grab everyone's attention in days to come, as this has a pretty serious um, threat of becoming probably a storm that we do not want to deal with. It's going to be our next troublemaker. Yes, it's in trouble and could cause even more trouble. Looking at the Euro model now, this is the 12Z output for today for September the 2nd, 2023. And here is a disturbance, all right? We're not going to worry about these, okay? So big X because these are are moving out to sea. They're not going to bother anyone, but we're going to focus on what is down here and then maybe more activity after that. I mean, the tropics continue to throw out these systems off of Africa since the MJO is technically in a fairly favorable environment now over the Atlantic, which gives way to these systems. So let's go forward. All right, this is, by the way, the vorticity map. So this is a three-plot system per, uh, provided by Dr. Levi Cowan. And uh, these red colors indicate more spin. There's more vorticity, more turning in the atmosphere, okay? And then the wind barbs that you see is where the wind is blowing from. So you can see these wind barbs right here. They're doing this, they're doing this. That means the wind is blowing in in this general direction, okay? So just kind of pointing that out, and then you got your uh, geopotential height. Those are the lines of, or the thickness lines to measure the atmosphere. Is there ridges? Is there troughs in the lower half of the atmosphere? This kind of tells us just that. So 39 hours out, this is for Sunday night into Monday morning for September the 3rd and the 4th. And of course, there is our disturbance right there. You can't miss it at all. It is very well modeled on the Euro. The thing is, the global models are having a hard time forecasting this, okay? And you'll see that. So just because there has been a downtrend on all the global models today, don't let that fool you, folks, because we've got some hurricane models to prove my point that this 
the, the Globals are not seeing this very well. And, you know, they didn't see Adalia very well either. They were forecasting Adalia of becoming only a tropical storm, where, in fact, Adalia became a Category 3 hurricane, or Cat 4, right before landfall, before weakening briefly. So, just kind of a huge reminder that global models are not your friend, and I still think this is going to become our next troublemaker in the Atlantic. So, this is day four. This is for Wednesday, September the 6th, and yeah, that is a nasty signature right there of a tropical depression, if not a tropical storm. Again, do I rarely pre-name storms? I don't think that's a good idea in my personal opinion, but there is just so much confidence that this is going to get named. I mean, there is no doubt even the NHC is saying that this is going to become a tropical depression in the next seven days or sooner. I mean, in seven days, it's probably going to be almost a hurricane, so might as well say this is probably going to be a name storm well before then. So this is September the 6th. This is September the 7th. This is September the 8th uh, for Friday morning. So at the end of this upcoming work week, that's what the system looks like on the weather map. And then we might have something a little more sinister to watch coming off of Africa. While the Euro is not showing anything, it is also, or the GFS that I'm about to show you, will clearly make my point clear here. But of course, fantasy land, folks. It's a warning. It's a warning. So now uh, this is the 10 day forecast. And again, I don't like stretching th uh, this going this far out because again, there's a lot of variability with the models. The Euro has been pretty consistent though with its placement and intensity in a way uh, out to day 10, but there's just a lot of leg room here, wiggle room, I should say. Um, and I will show you that uh, in just a second. So that's out to September the 12th. So some of you guys have left comments uh, in yesterday's video, by the way. Thank you all for watching that and sharing it. I do appreciate it. Um, so some of you were asking, is this going to hit the U.S.? Is there any threat to Florida? Is there any threat that this can get into the Gulf Coast? For right now, there is no threat for it to hitting the U.S. at the moment. Okay, what I just said is it's probably not going to happen for the time being. Now, could it hit the Caribbean? Absolutely, it could hit the Caribbean. Could it hit Puerto Rico? Could it go for the Dominican Republic, the Virgin Islands? Absolutely, okay? But right now, for the time being, because it's too far out in time, I don't think for right now, there's no threat to the United States, the East Coast or the Eastern Seaboard or the Gulf of Mexico for right now. So I hope that cleared out things. And so now you all know that, oh, okay, there's probably, there's not going to be a threat. But that doesn't mean there won't be or there will be. There's just a lot of uncertainty and models don't do good at uh, forecasting these systems. So the GFS here, this is a 12Z run from today and you can barely see a signature here of anything. And you're probably like, Okay, David, stop hyping this up. There's not going to be a tropical storm, right? There's not going to be a tropical depression. But we got to understand the GFS and the Euro are global models, and they are not meant for tracking hurricanes by any means. This is just a guidance of what might happen because, as you know, there's uh, very microscopic processes that um, allow hurricanes to get going. And if the model is off by a little bit, uh, where it's uh, it locating the vorticity or the amount of deep convection, that can throw the models out uh, or off pretty um, good, actually. And I think that's what might have happened in today's 12Z run, that this, the GFS and the Euro are not seeing this system very good at all. Okay, and I, I don't blame it. I really don't. All right, so that's what we um, got to uh, be aware of. And if we do go in uh, back and look at the tropical Atlantic wide, I mean, I could understand why the global models are not seeing that system very well. But I promise you, folks, wait until I show you the hurricane models. This is a big deal. This is the 18Z model run right here. So let's go to Vorticity, and you can see uh, it's still not seeing it very much at all. Very tiny as it approaches uh, some portions there of the Greater Antilles, Lesser Antilles, 
by Friday night and Saturday, September the 8th and the 9th as a weak tropical storm. But again, got to understand that initial conditions are very important. So let's take a look now at our hurricane models, shall we? Exciting part because this is a whole different ball game. We are talking about a potential major hurricane hitting the Lesser Antilles. I don't like to overhype this. I know you guys are going to call me out. Say, David, stop it. Stop the freaking hype. Stop scaring people. Doggone it. You know, but I cannot stop wrapping my head around on the potential of this system. And you'll see the water temperatures. So this is a look at the Hafs B hurricane model on Invest 95L. By the way, that's what it's called. Let's bring this forward. And yeah, we got a hurricane at this point with some early indications this could become a major hurricane on approach to the Greater and Lesser Antilles probably by Friday night, also into Saturday. And yeah, look at all that moisture right there, a big pocket of moisture, a nice good envelope. And that's why I still think this has pretty high potential of becoming a big troublemaker to the Caribbean. Also, the HAFS A model indicating that this is going to develop pretty nicely with pressures down to 984 millibars. So that would also be a low-grade hurricane, maybe a tropical storm at the very uh, weakest. This could get our name, next name storm, uh, Lee. Okay, and Lee, Gree, B, C. Random rhyme. Random nursery rhyme. But... This is going to be something else. Okay, so now looking at our ensemble forecast. This is a look at the spaghetti plot. And no wonder why we are concerned about this. You can see some of the models already aiming this towards uh, Martinique, the butterfly island, I call it. As well as uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. As well as some of the islands to the north there. like the, uh, As well as, say, the U.S. British Virgin Islands. Maybe Puerto Rico. We'll see if more models um, get on top of this. This is the first initial run uh, from uh, the National Hurricane Center uh, putting uh, models on this uh, for us to uh, monitor. But also, do not use this um, to make official decisions, okay? Please seek official info. And please, I beg you all to visit the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the latest information. Now, how strong will this get? Uh, this is looking like a pretty gnarly system by all means. We have uh, potential here out to day five and day six that this could become our next hurricane. Yeah, next hurricane. And yeah, look at this. Even the F uh, HFBI uh, model maybe wants us to cap two. So there's some bit of a high ceiling on this. And it's going to be interesting to see how all these models um, initialize in days to come based on the current conditions and the current structure of 95L. We do have the ensembles and they are extremely aggressive right now. So aggressive that we could very well be looking at a ceiling here that supports major hurricane intensity. So looking at weathernerds.org here on the EP uh, or ECMWF ensemble forecast. This is basically a blend of 50 members that are detecting this thing and they're already calling they're already calling folks a tropical storm if not a hurricane by this point now again what i just said folks what i just said is probably hype and it is to get your guys' attention because yep we're gonna we gotta kind of look at those latest models we really do you know Got to keep an eye on the ensembles. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. All right. Now, this is a look at the next seven or eight days uh, or so. And, yeah, this right here could become um, some of the members here dropping this down to as low as, say, 940 millibars. That would be a major hurricane intensity. So, yes, we got to watch this one. And then out today, 10. Man, that is pretty aggressive by far on the Euro Ensemble forecast with most of the members indicating certainly a hurricane, maybe even a major hurricane. And the reason why is that the water temperatures here are definitely above average. I mean, 
um, anywhere between, say, 2 to 3 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. The high upper ocean heat content is in full swing right now. We also have a patch here of very warm sea surface temperatures greater than 31 Celsius in the Bahamas. So if we get anything that moves into this area, it could get really ugly very, very quickly. If the shear is very light, we have a lot of moisture in place. Yeah, I hope and I hope it doesn't happen. And this could literally be a fish storm because if it gets into this area, it could really be a big fat troublemaker. Looking at the upper ocean heat content, definitely very high out there across the main development region as well as the southwestern Atlantic. We got um, upper ocean heat content values anywhere between 100 to 125. So the upper ocean heat content, not a big issue at all. We have a lot of it. And that's why uh, looking at this graphic now, I want to really disclose this. And so you all are not confused that what you're looking at here is the potential. This is the potential intensity. We're not looking at air pressure here, but how strong could Lee get if everything is perfect? If the shear is not strong at all, and we have a lot of upper ocean heat content, we have a lot of moisture, we have everything perfect for um, Lee. Yes, I'm pre-naming this, and you guys could call me out all you want on that, but I am very confident it's going to earn its name. And I'm telling you, if Lee moves through this area, and the shear is very light, uh, and there's a lot of moisture, we could be dealing with certainly a hurricane. I'm uh, maybe a major hurricane, but I'm not saying we will have a major hurricane. I don't want to go that far yet. I, mean, I don't want to hype that um or be so hyperbole where you guys literally just tune out okay so i want to make that clear okay but either way you put it this is a troublemaker big troublemaker you such a troublemaker don't get in my way all right so now let's take a look now at the um the accumulative cyclone energy, or how much uh, accumulative cyclone energy there is. We're in 13th place. We are literally um, in the uh, books of 1998, which had 181 ace points. By the way, quality beats quantity. Remember, quality is your ace points. Uh, how much cyclone energy there has been throughout the, the hurricane season. And uh, you could have very few named storms and have still very high ace points. So right now, this is a fairly busy season so far. And it ranks in the top 13 list of the busiest seasons out there. However, um, we, are that, we have the potential of rivaling 1998 if we continue going on this path. And that would be really, really bad. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But if it does, boy... You can see why we had a very busy season in despite of the face of strong El Nino that is cooking up a shop out there in the Eastern Pacific. But anyways, I sure hope this video was really helpful. I did not want to get too over myself on the potential that this becomes a major hurricane or what. But I'm telling you, look at the ensembles. I want you to do some ho you all to do homework for me. Go to weathernerds.org and go to um, the ECMWF Ensemble, and then you can see with what I mean based on the ensembles. Also, the hurricane models, too, really indicating that this is certainly going to become our next name storm, and that's why I am pre-naming this. You guys can call me out all you want. I really don't care, but I will be correct in the long term. I promise you that. I'm not here to cause fear, to cause harm, to cause uh, attention, just to get all these views versus other YouTube channels. This is real. This is um, a real deal that we could be looking at. All right. Everything supports this, folks. Becoming a big old fat troublemaker. Well, that's going to do it, folks. Thank you all for watching.